Hello photographers. In this video, I want to explain what stops are, referring to exposure for those who aren't familiar with them. And this is important. It's kind of like a key piece of information in understanding how to balance the exposure triangle, adjusting any combination of aperture, shutter speed, and ISO to change the overall brightness of your photo, the depth of field, and the what we call motion effect. If you make your shutter speed faster, to the freeze moving grass blowing in the wind, you'll need to compensate for the decreased light being recorded by the sensor. Either open up your aperture or increase your ISO. You do this yourself in manual exposure mode. And even though the camera does it for you in the other exposure modes, you still need to anticipate what the camera is going to do to compensate for those changes. If you change any of those three variables to get a different effect, you'll need to compensate by adjusting one or both of the other variables. But by how much? If you decrease the aperture, the photo will be darker. How much do you need to slow down the shutter speed and or raise the ISO to bring the brightness back? You can't subtract two apertures from an ISO and add a shutter speed. So we need a way to measure these changes and do some simple math. And those measurements are called stops. And once you know what stops are, you'll find that you can balance your exposures a whole lot better. Stops are how we quantify changes in ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. Simply stated, one stop is a doubling or halving of brightness. Increasing your ISO one stop will make your photo twice as bright. If you increase your shutter speed by two stops, your photo will be four times as dark as when you started. One half is bright for the first stop change and one half of that for the second stop. Increasing your aperture by three stops will make your photo eight times as bright as when you started. Double it for the first stop, double that for the second stop, and then double it again for the third stop. Notice how those changes are exponential and not linear. If your scene has an initial brightness value of two, which is just an arbitrary number I chose to make the math easy, and you increase it by one stop, it'll have a brightness value of four. Increase it a second stop, and it'll have a brightness value of eight. Increase it a third stop, and it'll have a brightness value of 16, and so on. So now you're probably wondering what are stops in terms of ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. Let's take a look at those now. Stops in terms of ISO are easy. Take a look at the scale here. Each number represents one stop from low ISOs on the left to high ISOs on the right. Notice how the ISO values are just being doubled or halved from the previous, just like what stops are. When you double your ISO, you're doubling the brightness. When you have your ISO value twice, you're having the brightness twice. The ISO range in your camera will vary, but what's more important to know here is how changing your ISO will change your photo's final brightness. And contrary to popular belief, you can photograph above ISO 200. Don't be afraid of high ISO. Just do what you need to do to get the photo. Here's an ISO dial in Fujifilm cameras. See how it's annotated in whole stops from 200 to 12,800. The 160 number is the minimum ISO. Now here's the scale for shutter speed from fast shutter speeds on the left to slow shutter speeds on the right. Each number, which are fractions of a second, represents one stop. You see the similarity to the ISO scale. The numbers, time in this case, are just being doubled or halved. There are some minor variations to make the numbers even, like from 1 one sixtieth to 1 one twenty-five, or from 1 15 to 1 8, things would get really wonky by literally doubling or halving, but they're more or less pretty easy to figure out. And your camera's actual shutter speed range is probably much larger than this. This is just for illustrating the concept. Just like the ISO dial, the shutter speed dial in Fujifilm cameras is annotated in whole stops. Calculating stops of ISO and shutter speed is pretty straightforward, but the stop scale for aperture is a bit more complex. As you see here, 
Each number represents a full stop, from small apertures on the left to large apertures on the right. These numbers look a little different because they're actually ratios. Ratios of the aperture opening to the lens length, which affects how much light is transmitted, but you can commit them to memory in no time. The range of aperture available to you will vary depending on your lens, not your camera, like the other variables. Here's an example of an aperture scale showing whole stops on a lens. This one indicating this particular lens can go from f2.8 to f16. This one can go from 1.4 to 16. So those are stops for ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. But those were whole stops. Maybe you don't want to completely double or halve your exposure. Maybe you want to be able to refine it a little better. Thankfully, cameras allow us to change our exposure variables by what are called third stops. Here's what third stops look like, the whole stops being in bold letters, and then the third stops in between. Going back to that Fujifilm ISO dial, we see the third stops are the small markings between the whole stops. Does the math, or at least the stop scale, make sense now? I hope so, because this is where the breakthrough really comes in when applying it to the exposure triangle. When changing one exposure variable, like the aperture from f8 to f4, all you do is count how many stops that is. It's two in that case. Then you adjust your other two variables, ISO or shutter speed, to add up to the same amount of stops. If your aperture adjustment makes the photo two stops brighter, then adjust your shutter speed and or ISO two stops darker. Let's go back to the first example from this video, photographing a picture of tall grass blowing in the wind. Those initial exposure variables were a shutter speed of 1 30th of a second, an aperture of F16, and an ISO of 200. That shutter speed's just too slow for moving grass. I need to make it faster to make the grass sharp to freeze it. So I increase it to 1 250th of a second. How many stops is that? It's three, three stops darker. 1 30th to 1 60th is one, 1 60th to 1 125th is two, 1 125th to 1 250th is three. That change makes the photo three stops darker. So I need to do something to make it three stops brighter to balance it back out. The easiest thing to do is to just increase the ISO by three stops from 200 to 400, 400 to 800, then 800 to 1600. Let's look at a triangle to see how this math works. This one's starting with a slightly different ISO. The change in shutter speed is minus three stops and the ISO compensation of plus three stops balances that back out. You could also increase the ISO one stop and increase the aperture two stops, increase the ISO two stops and the aperture one stop, or only increase the aperture that by three stops. No matter what you do, make sure you're making your photo three stops brighter to account for making it three stops darker with that shutter speed change. And again, this could be you making those changes in manual exposure mode, which is a great way to learn exposure, or it could be the camera doing it in the other exposure modes. But what will the camera do? It's important to know if the camera will give you a faster or slower shutter speed, or a wider or smaller aperture, and by how much, as those automatic adjustments will affect your exposure also. Being in those semi-automatic exposure modes doesn't mean that this stuff is not important. Let's say you don't understand why your shutter speed is so slow in aperture priority mode. Well, that's because you made your aperture smaller and the camera compensated by slowing the shutter speed by the appropriate amount of stops. I hope this is a light bulb moment. There's so much more that goes into exposure, but this is one of the biggest things that can help people understand exposure. You also need to consider that ISO isn't technically a part of exposure. Exposure is really just aperture and shutter speed. How will you prioritize either aperture or shutter speed to get the exposure that you want? And how will you use exposure compensation to make the photo brighter or darker? All of these topics and more are covered in the free Exposure Triangle for Beginners course, which has several videos and quizzes to help you 
better understand exposure. I'll link in the description to that free course if you want to learn more about this in more detail. So please leave any questions or comments below. I really hope this helped you. Subscribe for more tips like this if you're not already, and I'll see you in the next video.